Welcome back, everyone. J-Bone here for Smash This Podcast. Going to be discussing some WWE Money in the Bank 2017 predictions. But I am not solo. I have got a buddy with me. He's a rambler. And uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's usually a pretty big heel. But uh, we'll see if he behaves himself tonight. Please welcome Mr. Max Magus to the show. How you doing, dude? Yeah, I'm also a Bears fan, which makes me better than you already. Oh! You always got to throw that in there, don't you, dude? <laughs> hey, I, I got to remind the listeners where the uh, the line in the sand is drawn. Oh. <laughs> it's it's right between the Wisconsin and Illinois border. But you're not even in Illinois. You're, you're you're over in the mountains somewhere, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I, I live in Denver, so you know it's all about the orange and blue, yeah. which can be taken as Broncos or Bears. I usually mean it for Bears, but I let people take it however they choose. So does that mean you like both the Broncos and the Bears, or just mostly the Bears? Mostly the Bears, but I like both. Oh. I hate the Packers. I hate the Raiders. I definitely hate the Patriots. But anybody that doesn't hate the Patriots hasn't been paying attention. Right, right. It's the yeah. same thing as people that don't hate coal. They haven't been paying attention. <laughs> well, then you and I are on the same page on something then, at least. And we'll see how the rest of these, uh, you know, predictions go. We may be right on track. We may be off. We'll see. But um, before we get into that, we're going to talk about a couple of things that have been popping up in the news lately before we get into our predictions. Um, it was something that we were just talking about Uh there has been some discussion lately about uh, <laughs> a certain wrestler who, uh, from day to day, seems to be retired, and then maybe not retired, and he's getting upset at uh, the fans and some of the news sites. Oh, excuse me. Um, you know, for saying that he's retired, and then he comes out the next day saying... No, I never said that. It's like, well, then you need to explain yourself. I'm talking about Mr. Big Van Vader. And, um... Yeah, well, let's be clear on something. You mean the guy you picked a verbal fight with on Twitter tonight? Yeah, yeah, I kind of did. And I'm usually not like that. But, um, he's going after news sites for claiming stuff on a post that he shared, you know not too long ago within the last couple of weeks and a lot of people made assumptions from this post um that he was retired and now he's cussing out the fans and the news sites saying that it's bullshit it's like um you know and and for some reason I can't find the post that I said. Oh, you mean the, the, the tweet that he made that, that led to all of this? Yeah. <clears throat> all right, I've got it pulled up right now. Before I read this, I would just like to point out that those of you out there that have been listening to Ramblin' for the last couple of years, um, most people in this position would say thank you. Right now I'm going to say, what are you thinking? Um, you know that I live in Colorado. Um, what you may not know is that my house is about 20, 25 minutes away from Boulder. Boulder being um, the general area that Vader is from. I have worked with Vader in the past, never in the ring. Uh, I am not dumb enough to climb in the ring with that man. He is scary. He is strong. And he is liable to hurt me on purpose because I made him because I said something stupid. Actually, he's normally a pretty gentle guy. Let me get that out there before, you know, he thinks I'm trying to slander him. Vader, it's always been a pleasure working with you in the past. It truly has. Um, now, having said all that, I can understand why there's some confusion with this tweet. Uh, having read it over, um, when J-Bone linked me to it to so I could see what the deal was, I understand where everyone's coming from that think this is a retirement tweet, but 
I can also tell you by reading it, it's not a retirement tweet. Okay? It says, with great sorrow, and you have to bear with me, Invader, I apologize. I, the, you, you got some abbreviations here that I'm going to have to make some assumptions on and, and try and, and get the meaning of this out there for you. It says, with great sorrow, I leave my firstborn, my greatest love of all, for a chance to exist in the same plane of existence of my grandchildren yet to exist. Now, I'm reading this and I'm thinking that, you know, he's talking about leaving a better future for his kids and his grandchildren. Um, I think that's what this is saying. I'm, I don't read this as a retirement tweet. Like I said, I can understand where people are coming from. Um, but it's not that. Um, I, 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 I do agree with you that he's got to work on his wording, though, Jay bone because it does come across that way. Well, yeah, and then he's posting. Well, and people are talking to him, saying, uh, you know, they're getting it from other news sources, saying that he's retiring, and and he's coming out and saying, wrestling news source, what a bunch of bullshit, not retiring, and and so this was my retort to him from him saying that uh, earlier this afternoon. I said so either. I, okay, at first I said, you have to watch what you put out there to the public eye, considering several people understood what you put out there as a retirement. And I also retorted, so either explain what you meant or don't put stuff out there, but don't call your fans bullshit. You know, you know, don't, don't cut on the people who are reading news about you when you're still you know, considered relevant in the public eye and and you still want to be considered relevant in the public eye because if you're not retired and you're making bookings and stuff and you want people to come see you, then don't put stuff out there that can be misconstrued well, as this or that or the other thing from the people that follow you. You know, it's... And let me play devil's advocate on this and Real quick, shout out to the devil himself, Rob Risen. You and Drew killed it on NXT the other night. Uh, let me play the devil's advocate on this. Um, I, I get that it's a confusing tweet, but I'm not putting all the blame on Vader's tweet. I'm putting part of it on... It says, with great sorrow, I leave my firstborn. I think that first line right there, people just stopped reading and said, oh, you're retiring. Uh, you know, if you read it all the way through... It, it might be a little different. And I know you read it all the way through, Jay bone and I know that it's still a little bit confusing, but there's people out there that read that first line and just, boom, oh, he's retiring. You, it, you know, it, you got to make a little inference with some of it, but, you know, l let me make peace between both sides. Vader, fans, this was a misunderstanding. He's not retiring. He's talking about his kids and his grandchildren. Um, now, Ask him what his next booking is, and let's you know move forward with a understanding of what's really going on. I, I think that's the best way, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and if he's not, that's fine. But then, like I said, he needs to watch what he puts out there on on social media, and and and, and another discussion for another uh, topic and another time is, <laughs> you know, fans have especially been following him because of his health issues. And that there also, you know, makes you wonder why is he still wrestling? But you know, it's not for us to make that decision for him. That's that's the decision that he's got to live with, whatever he decides to do with his career and his life. You know, Vader, I'd like to apologize right now because I'm going to partially make fun of something I probably shouldn't. Uh, wasn't it about a year ago that he announced that the doctor said that and or maybe he said that he only had a year to live. Maybe it wasn't that the doctor said it. Wasn't it about a year ago he said he only had a year to live, and here we are. He's getting upset with fans that misunderstood something he tweeted. Uh, he told us he had six months to live, <laughs> or something to that effect. Vader, <laughs> Vader, I'm glad you beat the odds. Keep on fighting. Let's uh, live to fight another day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 
So, all right. Uh, and, and, and Vader, I'll tell you what. If you decide you want to hurt J-Bone for the uh, words that he uh, tweeted at you, you let me know. I got your back, Vader. I got you. He can bring Dizzy with him. I'll take out Dizzy, too, for you. Oh, uh, thanks a lot. I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Dizzy will uh, appreciate that as well. Um, he's not here. That's, that's not my problem. Yeah, he's going to love you for that, just so you know. Everybody loves me for everything I do. When are you going to pull your head out of your ass and realize that? Right. Oh, goodness. Uh, let's see. Uh, just I don't want to spend too much time on this because I think it's absolutely flippant hilarious. Um, apparently there is, and this is outside of the world of wrestling, but a lot of wrestling fans do have been clamoring for this and have been uh, following this over the course of the last several months. The rumors... The, uh, you know, the uh, little little banter back and forth, the million questions to Dana White. Well, he just announced yesterday that the uh, fight is officially on between Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. Um, it's going to be a boxing match. There are going to be no MMA there absolutely zero MMA involvement in this pay-per-view. Every single match surrounding this main event will be a boxing match. Dumb. Hey, hey go ahead. No, I, I said dumb. I, oh, I, I, I think it's dumb. stupid. <laughs> no, I said dumb. Okay. <laughs> uh Oh well, then that that uh, that takes care of what I was gonna, you know, ask you and see how you felt about this. But now, uh, news. Well, I, came... I, I am actually scrolling. I I want to share something that went up. I thought it was earlier today. Had to have been earlier today. Oh, here we go. One of my friends who does wrestling stuff here in Colorado. Uh, posted something about this that another one of my friends made a comment and he described exactly what's going to happen in the fight. And it, it it's basically going to be worthless. It's, it's, it's not really worth our time. Um, how many people are going to complain later that night that it was the worst fight ever? Um, Connor's pretty good at the MMA stuff. And Mayweather's pretty good at dancing around until you get too tired to fight him. You know what I mean? Well, if you watched Mayweather's last fight with, and I apologize, I can't remember who it was. It was another famous boxer. Uh, uh, I can picture him. I can't think of his name because I don't follow boxing that much. I used to back back when... <laughs> Put it this way, back when Tyson used to destroy people in the ring, that was freaking boxing, okay? What Floyd does now, he makes out with the guy in the ring for 12 rounds, makes millions and millions of people watch it and spend their money on it. I'm sorry, if I want to watch two guys make out in the ring, I'll go, you know, go, go look up some porn on Tumblr or something. I'm, I'm not going to spend 70, 80, 90 bucks, whatever they're going to charge for this piece of garbage. The, the only the only draw for me, honestly, and this may sound weird, but I'm seeing a lot of people react to this. Baro Ronaldo is going to call the fight because it's linked with Showtime pay-per-views. Hmm. What do you think about that? <sighs> that Does will that make, make you want to watch it anymore? Huh? A little bit, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's a little more entertaining now that you've added um, Mauro Ronaldo to it. I don't even care how the fight will go. Um, I, I am a fan of um, McGregor. I think he's kind of entertaining. I mean... When he uh, was out there on the mic after he uh, won the title that night, um, the promo he cut was pretty fucking heelish. Uh, kind of put me to shame. Um, Amaro Ronaldo 
just kind of takes it to a new level. I think Mayweather is a piece of shit. Um, he is. He he's an embarrassment he, for the world of boxing. Yeah, I honestly, I, I think it's a. I, I I wish this wasn't going to happen. I like the fact that Conor McGregor's like uh, Conor McGregor really wants to just get in there and and uh, shut him up. I, I I think that's what it is. Um, well, the, the question is, is he actually going to put on a show for us? Yeah, but like I said, are we going to watch two guys make out and just dance around each other for 12 rounds? Yeah. I or think it's going to be a Conor lot of McGregor, dancing. Are we, are we going to see Conor McGregor legit go in there and fuck him up? Well, the problem is there's no MMA. It's all boxing. So yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of dancing in this fight. I think that's all it's going to be is because now you've taken it out of McGregor's strong suit and you've put it into Mayweather's strong suit. Mayweather dances around a lot. If you did this MMA style, McGregor could charge in there, spear him, and ground and pound him. Yeah. <clears throat> but you made this a stand-up boxing match. That's Mayweather's area. But I'm guessing Mayweather wouldn't do it without that sanction put on it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting how the, uh, press talks about this over the course of the next two months. The fight is in, towards the end of August, I believe I heard something like that. So we'll have to see. Uh, let's see what else. Well, I guess McGregor's trolling on his Twitter about this right now. Oh, you know he's going to well, get as much attention as he can, but he's an attention whore. Not he's, necessarily he's, right this moment. But. He's, he's funny, though. You know, he's funny. Uh, let's see. Uh, Daniel Bryan is coming back next Tuesday off of maternity leave from hanging with his wife. So it'll be good to see him back. All right. Let's get into some money in the bank talk here. <laughs> Not a very big card, but like I said before we uh, started recording here, they uh, they certainly do want to leave plenty of time for these matches. You're not going to see a an eight minute or a ten minute ladder match. At least nobody wants to see that. They want to see you know a lot of action, a lot of drama, a lot of close calls, a lot of you know hang, hanging and banging. You know, um, we've got. What is this? One, two, three, four, six matches on the card. One of them being on the pre-show. So actually five on the card. Uh, we'll start with the kickoff match. That was announced uh, earlier today. The return of Zack Ryder joining the King of Mojo himself. Mojo Raleigh versus the Colognes in a tag team kickoff match. Um, so what Stetson and Old Spice versus Mojo and Zack Ryder? <laughs> yeah, no, not Cologne, Cologne, <laughs> right? Cologne, that's what you that's what we were just talking about. Was Cologne, no, 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 no. not Cologne, Cologne, right? Cologne. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure where you're getting lost here. Uh, freaking. Have Chris they announced up. any implications on on this match between Mojo and Zach and Stetson and Old Spice? <laughs> Stetson and Old Spice. <laughs> which one is Stetson? And which one is Old Spice? I think it's just a tag match. I'm not going to lie, I can't even tell Primo and Epico apart as far as which one's Primo and which one's Epico. I'm not really certain what makes you think I can tell them apart as to which one is Stetson and which one's Old Spice. Well, one has a goatee and must mustache, the other one just looks sassy, at least in the picture here. Sassy? Sassy. Is that what you're saying? He likes sassy? Very sassy. He's a sassy right. clone. Um... Do you like the fact that they just automatically put Zack Ryder back with Mojo, or would you rather see them solo? You know, here, here's something that I think they really missed the, the boat on. Um, 
you had Hawkins on SmackDown. Um, granted, he really didn't do much, and he really kind of seemed to be a waste of space, but while Zack Ryder was injured, you could have put him and Mojo kind of in a grudging tag team, and then when Zack returns, you have this, oh, what are we going to do with Zack Ryder kind of thing, and you could have expanded on that and turned it into an actual storyline, but instead, we're just going to go the simple route, bust Hawkins back down to NXT with occasional appearances on the main roster, and when Zack gets back, he goes straight back with Mojo. I think that there was an opportunity here to make something bigger out of this. Um, you want to push Mojo to be one of your next big faces, then why not do some kind of story that puts him out there a little more in the limelight, gets people a little more used to him leading into whatever your plans are for him. Um, I think you just really wasted his time and the fans by just having him do limbo type stuff until Zack Ryder came back. But that's my opinion. Yeah. You know, and I, I for one was excited and not, you know, not like jumping up and down, losing my mind, obviously, but I was excited, excited when Hawkins was coming back because I wanted to see them actually put him back with Zack Ryder. I thought that would have been tr a tremendous idea to put that old tag team back together. Uh, kind of a, kind of a nostalgia thing, but it never happened. They kept doing all these goofy ass promos and uh, it just, you know, it never, never came to fruition. Um, Now he's on Raw doing God knows what. I have absolutely no idea. But yeah, he just no, did a match on. He just recently did a match on NXT. Oh, so like I said, that they're kind of bouncing him back back and forth. It's like, well, we're mostly going to use you here, but every once in a while we'll throw you here. And I think it's stupid. I think they need to figure out a plan. For him, and th and that plan could have been a big deal, especially with Mojo being pegged to be one of the next big faces. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He had a match against uh, Ale uh, Alistair. Uh... Alistair Black. Yes, thank you. I couldn't. Oh, I was... uh, personally, and this is just a me thing. Um, I don't make decisions. Uh, there's reasons that I don't get to make decisions. Personally, me, I think. Um, Alistair's ready for the main roster. Oh, there's a lot of people saying that. Oh, in fact, I have a suggestion. We make a trade. We send Alistair to the main roster, and we send that babbling buff buffoon back down to NXT. Which, which, which babbling buffoon? The one they wasted a segment for at Extreme Rules. Are you talking about El Vigabondo? You don't speak Spanish. Don't try that again. I, it's El Vegabondo. I, I drift, I should say, I walk with El Vegabondo, Mr. Elias Sampson. I am a card-carrying member, one of the three <laughs> card-carrying members <laughs> of listen, the Elias I, Sampson I'm... Street Team Fan Club. <laughs> listen, in a, in a month and... It's 30 minutes to midnight here. In a month and two days, I am going to be 40 years old. I have been watching wrestling since the 80s. Can't wait to see In this. the entire time I have been watching pro wrestling, I can safely say that I have seen, never seen a bigger waste of a segment at a pay-per-view than when they had him in the middle of the ring singing his song and nobody came out to attack him. Whether he came out on top or they came out on top, I don't care. Somebody should have come out there and attacked him. But he, he sounded great. Did did he not? You, you Listen, didn't... you're smoking some of Baron's shit. I don't know where you how you got it, but you should probably just leave it to him. I I, I can I can clearly see. That Max Magus is not going to be a card carrying member of the Elias Sampson slash El Vigabondo street, street team 
fan club. That's, that's man, the, that was a mouthful. That that's hurtful, dude. It's but hurtful. Then again, when we start talking about Goldberg, you start talking with a mouthful too. Yeah, yeah. A mouthful of Goldberg. <laughs> can't help it that he's one of my favorites. Listen, I, I'm not saying there's not some potential there. <laughs> but I, you I, wasted I see it. I see you, it. You a lot of people wasted know, I see it. a segment at a pay-per-view to have this guy come out and sing who's not really established on the main roster. In fact, I'm not going to lie what little bit of NXT I saw, they really didn't take much time to establish him very well on there either. This is a guy that should still be on NXT establishing himself, uh, not on the main roster yet, and definitely not taking up time at a pay-per-view to sing a song and not have anything advanced because of it. It's it's going to be slow, but I I think there is going to be some things happening with him. I mean, he has significant wins over one of my favorites <coughs> which was mildly upsetting to me but uh you know i let it go i let it go you know he beat dean ambrose clean so um yeah we'll, we'll have to see that's that's because dean ambrose got something in his eye and and while he had well while he was trying to get that out of there elias hit him from behind yeah yeah he practically pulled a jeff jared on him and almost hit him with the guitar Oh, that would have been classic. <laughs> oh, yeah, but nonetheless, back to the money in the bank here. Uh, I'm sorry, what was I complaining about that led into Elias? Uh, uh, holy crap, yeah, where did we go with that? That's weird. Oh, I was talking about the wasted storyline for that, that led to Zack and Mojo being back together. Yeah. Yeah, they just threw them back, and well, and, and I understand it's it sucks that they won a tag team championship opportunity in the same breath that Zack Ryder got injured. So I understand they have some unfinished business, but I mean, I don't know. Let me be clear: my complaint is not that they are back together. My complaint is that. A, an opportunity was there to build up. Do something. Um, then just throw them in a yeah. match against the Colognes. Yeah. And, and you no, know, I mean, while Zack Ryder was injured, there was an opportunity to build a story involving yeah. Zack's injury and, and Hawkins and Mojo and all of this. And the opportunity was squandered. That's where my problem comes in. Yeah. I'm cool with the fact that they're back together. I, th I actually think these two work well together. I have no complaints about them being a team. I have complaints about how the story got handled that put them back together. That's where my problem comes in. Let's yeah. be clear on that. Oh, okay. So, so who's going to win between uh, the return of the Hype Bros and uh, the Clones? Uh, Zach Ryder, everyone else is going to be laying on their ass at the end of the match wondering what just hit them. I have to agree. I don't think we're going to see anything weird like Zach turning on Bojo or anything like that. Um, it'd be pretty shocking because we've never I, seen I it. will say this. If they were to bring in the person I think they need to bring in, then I would automatically switch over to the Colognes. I don't see it happening, though. Honestly, I think uh, Carlito needs to come back. And I think he needs to be a part of the Cologne family. Oh, we've been saying that for at least a year now. But they keep lowballing him from what I hear. Well, they need to work it out because uh, now that you've got them out there as the Colognes instead of as Los Matadores or, you know, Similar the dumbasses gimmick. from the South, you know. Yeah. You really got to bring him in and have him manage them. Something, yeah. Something. He's a bod guy. Why not? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's back down. We're, uh, we're going to the the main card now. 
Uh, let's talk about the SmackDown Women's uh, Championship uh, between the <sighs> champ, Naomi, versus the wrestling debut of mm. Lana. Now, wait a minute. This can't be her wrestling debut because I read something about her winning the number one contendership. And you can't win it without a match, right? She has not had a match on the main roster. She basically asked for her opportunity uh, in a segment with Shane McMahon okay, and all so the other girls. I don't know where I saw that she won the number one contendership. However, what I see here, it says... On the June 6th episode of SmackDown, Lana made her first appearance since moving to the brand during the Superstar Shake-Up and demanded to be added to the women's la Money in the Bank ladder match, with Commissioner Shane McMahon refusing. Lana then confronted SmackDown Women's Champion Naomi, saying that she could beat her, uh, saying she could beat her. Shane denied Lana again, telling Lana that she had to earn her opportunities during the six-woman tag match. Lana attacked Naomi, so it sounds like she was in this six woman tag match. No, Maybe? she no. she was no, she wasn't. She was she distracted uh she distracted Naomi or something at some point. The ref was turned, hurt Naomi, and then um she ended up putting her finish on someone. I don't know if it was Naomi or someone else, but she ended up putting her finish on someone. And I'll, I'll say this. As much as I can't stand the fact that Lana may actually wrestle in a, well, rather sexy uh, ballroom nightgown, um, her finisher is badass. Okay. And coming from a guy who has probably trained her, being her husband, the uh, soon-to-be-returning Rusev, um, I have no doubt he had some help in, you know, in, in both A, training her and helping her decide what finisher to use. Um, so I'm going to be really, you know, besides the goofy-ass, you know, dancing gimmick the 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 elegant gimmick or whatever the hell you call this gimmick that lana has um i i, I do love the color of the dress it was quite uh whew, man I, I can't even talk about it um whew, it's, it's getting warm in here damn um it was it was quite quite uh, uh what's the word i'm looking for um Eye popping, yeah. There we go, yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, <laughs> she looked ravishing in that dress, but I, I, I can't think for a moment that she would actually be doing a match in that dress because she'd be tripping over her feet because that's way too long. Or, and bear with me here for a moment. She wears that long dress, she steps on it, and it just rips completely off, showing that there's nothing underneath the dress. I just about fell out of my chair. <laughs> I know you did. That's why I gave the description that I did. going to do when the ref has a heart attack and dies in the rig? I mean, come on. What, what are you going to do then? <laughs> Put on a referee shirt and go out there myself. Dude, you would die just like that, dude. <laughs> uh -huh. No, I'd get the pen. I'd probably, I wouldn't die just like that, dude. I'd get killed after I got the pen. Yeah, there you go. If you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so, as, as goofy... I'm sorry, as, Becky Lynch, I apologize. I shouldn't have said any of that. Please forgive me. Oh, you're cheating on your girl. I haven't done it yet. I just suggested that I might. That's all. Uh, well, we'll see how she reacts to you after the pay-per-view. We'll yeah. see. Uh, all right. Well, uh, you know me. I've picked her to win it all. <laughs> 
So as controversy. Oh. As controversial and as goofy as this match may seem for Lana's debut main roster uh, wrestling match, that is a championship match against Naomi. Uh, overall, what do you think about this? And do you think Lana <sighs> even has a chance? She might have a chance, but uh, I think it's dumb that uh, she's made what? three appearances total now on SmackDown and already has a uh, has the title match, I, I don't think she's earned it. I mean, she's... I think it's two. How many matches has she had total? Okay, let's think about that. Because wasn't she involved in one of the big multi-women tag matches at WrestleMania at one point? Oh, was she in that this past Mania? Was that this past Mania or the... Or was that the Mania from last year? Uh, hold on, I, I can't remember, uh, let's see, Emma was out for this mania, she was in that match, so it had to have been last year, but I could be wrong, let's see, her appearance was short but sweet, that's what I remember, a couple of quick clicks will get us the answer, okay, so while you're doing that, um, Well, that worked out really well for you. Kudos on that. Yeah, I just drew a blank there. Uh, <laughs> I was going to go into the next thing, but I didn't want to backtrack and jump all over the place. So, um, <laughs> Cue the Jeopardy music. No, that was definitely last year. Let me scroll up and pull up last year. Cause that only takes a second now that I've gotten this far back. It wasn't. It wasn't this year. This year was uh, was what a one on one, Charlotte and uh, Bailey. Yeah, something like All that. Right. Let's see. So last year we had uh, Team Total Divas, Brie Bella, Paige, Natalia, Alicia Fox, and Eva Marie. Um, they beat Team Bad and Blonde, Lana, Naomi, Tamina, Emma, and Summer Rae by submission. So Lana was in that match. Okay. Uh, but she's had what? That match? Is about the extent of it? As far as main roster matches, I know she's had a bunch down at NXT while she was training and some... I don't think she's had any televised NXT matches. They were all in, like, the little house show ones. Right, and I, personally, I just don't think that she has established her herself enough to even be considered for a title match. That's my opinion. Yeah, That's what I'm getting at. I tell you what, man, I hope she shocks the world. I hope she does. Because if she doesn't, I, man, it's going to be the biggest stink fest. I hope she shocks the world, too. I don't see it happening, but I hope so. Yeah. And I hope Otherwise, I'm not. And I oh, hope I'm not out of Never mind. And I hope she's wrestling in something besides a ballroom gown. Yeah, it's just, it's, it can't happen. That'd be crazy. Yeah. So okay, so over uh, over all the the nonsense and controversy and everything, who's winning this? Um, most likely Naomi, but we can only hope that it's that, that Lana surprises us. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say Lana just for shits and giggles. You know, just because I don't think a lot of people think she's gonna. You know, I like to go outside the box once in a while. So now, as long as we're talking women, let's go into the women's uh, Money in the Bank match, which is, uh, it's, uh, they're, making his, they're making history this Sunday. It is a first women's ladder match. 
here's my thing. Ever since Stephanie went out there and her and Lita did the whole switch over back from divas to women, they have been giving them more and more chances to prove themselves. Every once in a while, they have fallen short. Personally, I think they're reaching up and grabbing that brass ring, as Roman Reigns once phrased it. I think they are... I, I think the women are killing it. I, I think they're doing the right thing. Um, I'm still not a fan of Naomi, but um, I, I think the, the women are, are doing great. Every time they get, get an opportunity like this to make history, they make history in style. Especially my girl, Becky. Right. Now, there is a big question that came out in the news within the last uh, day or so. Um, they, if it has anything to do with won't the ladder break their nails, whoever wrote that article needs to be hit with a steel chair repeatedly. <laughs> No, and uh, this uh, this article is courtesy of uh, Ringside News. Um, uh, just quick reading this. There may be plans to add a sixth person to the women's Money in the Bank ladder match this Sunday. Um, the official Twitter account posting a tweet proclaiming that six women will be vying for the briefcase at Sunday's event. This may have been a blunder made by the social media team, but they've accidentally... But they, you know, they, they've accidentally given away things that, uh, yeah, in the in the past made by mistake. Um, so there's there's five listed: uh, Meltzer uh, said in one of his last uh, Wrestling Observer shows, said uh, could be a possibility of someone being called up. There's also rumors of someone new debuting, could be a return. There's a lot of different options out there if there is actually a sixth person. And we can discuss each one just real briefly. Um, the first one off the top of my head is the returning of Paige. I honestly do not see that happen happening at this point. Um... I don't remember if she tweeted it or I saw it somewhere else. It has been announced that uh, the wedding date is set for her and Alberto Del Rio. I don't see her making a return at this point. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, I know that she was, uh, she did tweet uh, about, about a week ago about um, getting x ray done, x rays done, and trying to see if she could return to rest. Return to wrestling. So, um, you know, maybe they're they're kicking her back in. Um, maybe they won't call her back up at all and they'll let her contract expire. I have no idea really how her relationship is with WWE right now. I know there's been some controversial things that have happened over the last year. I'm not going to discuss them. But, um, you know, I still want to see her return. Um Another possibility is a call, like uh, Meltzer said, a call up of someone from NXT. My first guess would be Asuka. Um, the next NXT TakeOver event is not until uh, SummerSlam weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Possibly, yeah. And I'm pretty sure they're not going to have her lose it on a stand, lose that belt on a standard episode of. Um, NXT and I think that despite how well the experiment with Kevin Owens coming up before dropping the title despite how well that went I don't really see them putting much faith in that again so Asuka is not high on my list to be a possible sixth contender in this match just due to the fact that she is currently the women's champion she's got things she needs to focus on in NXT um, however, well, just remember that's how they brought up Paige too, and they just made her drop the title once she became champion on the main roster. True. Uh, here's another thing to think about, though. 
Ember Moon, who is technically still considered the number one contender, uh, despite the injury, is back. The injury is healed. She has a match with Peyton Royce next week on NXT, I believe is what the, what it said on the screen. Oh, okay. For those of you that don't know, um, Drew McIntyre faced off against the devil himself, Rob Ryzen. Yes, that's twice in one show I've mentioned that guy. There must be a reason for it. Um, <laughs> Go check him out. <laughs> it, it was a great match. Um, after that, the, the Billy Kay and Peyton Royce are in the back, and they are... I, didn't, I couldn't quite hear everything they said at that point, but they said they were looking for something iconic, and then all of a sudden there was Ember Moon right there who signed a contract to take on Peyton Royce. Now, they did interview, I found this on the WWE <coughs> Facebook page, they interviewed two NXT women about this historic women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Okay. The two women they interviewed were Liv Morgan, who you may recognize from... The, the last season of Tough Enough that they did. And Billy Kay. Now, <coughs> if Peyton Royce is facing off with Ember Moon, what's Billy Kay doing? Probably making an appearance on the pay-per-view Sunday night. What do you think, you know? Well, she has been impressive. Her, uh, both uh, Peyton Royce, uh, Peyton Royce, dear God, it's late. And I'm sober. That's sad. Because um, usually I tip a couple during these, and, I don't, and I'm not. Um, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce uh, have been pretty much tied at the hip lately. Um, so if they if they do get brought up, I'd almost have to think they would get brought up together. But that's not a it, you know who knows. Well. We thought DIY was about to get brought up together, and you saw what happened to them. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Ooh. But they're both Quick very side good. note. Quick side note. Do you watch Orange is the New Black? No. Oh, you should. There's two characters on there. Anybody out there that's, that listens that knows who know, knows the show will know who I'm talking about. Flocka and Maritza. Now, these two and Billy Kay and Peyton Royce have a lot of similarities Check it out sometime. Oh, okay. Will do. Uh, yeah, what are they going into their third season now? Fifth season. They they just released the fifth season last week. Oh. Well, then. <laughs> All right. And, uh, yes, in case you're wondering, I've already binge-watched the entire fifth season. You binge-watched it, didn't you? That's what I literally what I just said. <laughs> I must have missed a bitch part. Um, the only other option besides a call up or a return, um, return as I mean return from injury like Paige, would be a return from outside of the WWE. Uh, there are some rumors swirling that a certain couple is going to be making their presence known at Money in the Bank. How All right, I'm glad you brought this up. Before you reveal the names, let me remind you what just happened at WrestleMania. Okay? okay. You have teams in the ring for the tag team ladder match. All of a sudden, New Day's music hits. while well, they're hosting WrestleMania, so who else's music is going to hit? They come walking out looking like they're dressed to get in the ring and wrestle, and they announce that this match is now a four-way tag team match for that, that those titles. Yeah. And what happened? Team Extreme. Okay? Yeah. So before you mention the names, it is very possible that we're going to get all five of these people in there, and you're going to have someone like Naomi come out. Or not necessarily Naomi, uh, Lana. Or even Nikki Bella. Let's you know. Let's go out on a limb here and let's just pick somebody that feasibly could be entertained as being part of this match. Yeah. You have one of them come out. Hell, even Billy Kay, Liv, Liv Morgan, or Paige. You know, have one have one of these people come out, and they're like, this match has now been upgraded to a six woman ladder match. And then you hit the music, 
for the miracle, Mike Bennett. Well, that was his gimmick in TNA. I don't care what you call him in WWE. It still gets the point across that I'm trying to make. Well, yes. Uh, although Mike Bennett would not be in the match. It would be his, uh, his wife. Yeah, but I think they have a really good gimmick going where it's like he's the controlling one in the relationship. Yeah, could be. Although towards the end, I, I got to admit, I really didn't watch too much towards the end of their gimmick in, in Impact Wrestling. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, I certainly think it would be an, uh, a good addition to the match. Uh, and if you haven't watched or haven't known about what Maria's been doing in the independence since her uh, leaving the WWE several, several years ago, uh, she's made quite a name for herself, and she's been doing some really good things. Uh, she uh, she made a hell of a presence in Ring of Honor for several years, and then they spent a cup of coffee in uh, TNA, which could have been tremendous, and it's sad it wasn't more because I feel like they are talented enough to do some big things. And, uh, you know, TNA has been going through some, uh, big changes. And unfortunately when their contracts were up, uh, they, they couldn't be salvaged. So, um, yeah. So, you know, moving on to bigger and better things. It's been, it's been kept very hush hush. Uh, there's been no like debut, you know, vignettes given when they show up, they're going to show up out of the blue. I vignettes. think. Vignettes. Vignettes with a y sound. Vignettes. What did I say? Vignettes. Eh, potato, potato. Whatever. <laughs> there's no Y in vignettes. <laughs> no, but there's a, a, a G and an N combo in there that actually makes it go vignette. Is that a French thing? Uh, I, I would think so. Oh, I always thought it was Puerto Rican. Anyways. Um, no, no, that's the uh, pre-show match. Oh, yeah. What was I thinking? Oh, the <laughs> colognes. You know, yes. With uh, with Stetson and Old Spice. Oh, it's not cologne. It's cologne. We've been through this. <laughs> Speaking of tag team <laughs> matches... Um, Actually, no, we have to backtrack because we didn't say uh, who was going to win the women's money in the bank letter match. God, we're just, we're just doing horrible with this tonight. Jeez Louise. Um, we got Becky Lynch. Because you're sober. I am. If I tip a few, I, I, could, I usually do so much better with these. Jeez Louise. I'm just <laughs> not in my game tonight. Well, uh, and I'll tell you right now, the way it's listed on Wikipedia... And outside of what I read in an article on WWE.com, this is only listed as the following. Money in the Bank ladder match for a WWE SmackDown Women's Championship match contract. There is no statement about how many people are going to be in this outside of what it said in an article. So the possibility is still open that they add that sixth person. But right now it is just the five. You know, and it could even be a thing where, say, say Lana does beat Naomi, and they put Naomi in the match as a as an opportunity to get her championship back. You know, something like that. Honestly, I see this match happening early, and I see Naomi and Lana being later in the show. Yeah, could be, could be. Uh, but we got Becky Lynch, one of your favorites, uh, Charlotte Flair. Natalia, Tamina, and Carmella. Duh. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I really got to wonder if James Ellsworth is going to be out there with her. You got to think he's going to be. Because this oh, is a he ladder will. match, and this is gonna, there's got to be some shenanigans going on. Listen, you have been on this show when I have said some very positive things about James Ellsworth. So uh, this might come as a shock to you, but they need to leave him in the locker room. Indefinitely. 
Oh, that's harsh, dude. I'm right now. He's doing nothing for the brand. To me, he's not improving it. At, at least he's not harming it. But he's doing nothing either way for the brand. I think it's time to bench him and find something else for him. Um, all he's doing right now is acting like a lovesick puppy, and Carmella is uh, reciprocating um, until they start putting him into some actual matches. It's it's not worth it because you know. <laughs> And I get it. He is basically the male equivalent of a valet right now. I get that. But to me, he is not adding to the show in any way, shape, or form. Repackage him and do something different. I'd like to see him on 205 like Live. Him. But that's me. I, I think he could make a good name for himself on 205 Live. He could be the ultimate underdog. This is true. He could be. Yeah. Um, so, with without overthinking the addition, saying, oh, well, if this person come back, she's going to win it. Or if that person arrives and debuts, uh, she's going to win it. Just looking at the five here on paper between Becky, Tamina, Carmella, Charlotte, and Natalia, who wins? Let, let's be honest. Unless you have, say, Maria or Nikki Bella come back, it's most likely going to be one of these five that win the match, even if there is a sixth participant added. Yeah. Uh, that being said, barring a return of Maria or Nikki Bella's status, um, I have to go with Becky Lynch like I always do. It's probably not going to happen, but that's, that's who I have to go with. Oh, you know what? I didn't even think about Nikki Bella coming back. Well, I, she's. It's not like she's out with an injury. I mean, they. There's, John Cena. There, there were rumors around the time that she got engaged that she was going to take time off because she was banged up. Because of well, it's. It's not necessarily a, a legit injury at this point. I, I don't mean that as in her injury as storyline. I mean, at, at this point, it's probably something that's basically healed. But she could use some downtime from, and that's probably what happened. Yeah. It's not like she had a new injury at WrestleMania or anything like that, or or in the weeks leading up to Mania. You know, she probably strained the existing injury, and she's rested, taking some time off, and maybe she comes back, maybe she doesn't. You know. Hey, she could have hurt her neck from nodding yes after John Cena asked her to marry him. Uh. I probably would have hurt my neck nodding after John Cena asked to marry me, you know? You're you're jealous of her, aren't you, dude? I can I can smell uh, totally. it. Totally. Totally. I'm also jealous of Brie Bella. <laughs> Every night, yes, yes, yes. You're a hot mess, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all over the place tonight. I you know. <laughs> I was told I could be whatever I wanted to be, so tonight I chose to be all over the place. <laughs> you chose to be a male whore. Um, so, so, so who? who hey, male who, who horse makes good money. Yeah. Becky Lynch. Yeah, don't get me started on that. Um, your your pick is Becky Lynch. Always. Okay. I'm just a gigolo, and everywhere I go, um, people know what I'm playing. You, you got it's a damn good song. You, you got to think <laughs> who is going to look good carrying around this briefcase. It's not Becky. just. It's not just. No, I, okay. But um, you know, uh, I, I'd like to borrow a line from Captain Jack Sparrow, and I would like to apply it to Becky Lynch. Okay. She would look great in a dress or nothing. And I assure you, if she comes back to my room, I have nothing. <laughs> Nothing but a briefcase. Um, do you think Tamina stands a chance? <laughs> the, this match, I personally don't think, plays to Tamina's strengths. <clears throat> Tamina's a brawler that's going to beat you down. That's her strengths, okay? Um, but her she's, finisher is also a top rope finisher. Okay, but she's not. She's, she's not considered I'm not, a high flyer. 
I, I'm not saying she can't do it, but she's really not the climbing a ladder type. She's not the body type for it. Um, her strengths are beating people down in a brawl. If you put her in a match against Naomi, just a one-on-one -on -one uh, title match right now, then I would say, yes, she's she's got a chance of winning the title. But what we're talking about here is a ladder match. We're talking about her having to climb the ladder at the end, grab the, the, the briefcase, and come down from there. While I believe she can do it, it's not playing to her strengths to have her climbing that ladder. Her strengths are in the beatdown. So, no, I don't see Tamina winning this match uh, Although it would be cool. She's a second generation superstar. She deserves quite a bit of respect. Um, she's, she is doing a difficult job because, you know, my understanding is she's a really sweet person. And here she is. She's got to play this badass um, stick up the ass type, you know, and yeah. she's doing a good job of it. Yeah. Uh, my pick personally, and this is more just for comedy purposes, that I, I think this would be really funny. Uh, don't say it. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. You don't. Yeah, yeah. Carmelo's gonna win it, and James Ellsworth is gonna carry the briefcase. Actually, you know, it'd be funny is if she gets up there, almost breaks a nail, and makes him climb up there and grab the le grab it for her. Could he legally do that though? I don't know. I mean, it's it's technically a no DQ match, right? Right, and honestly, my opinion of the situation is if he pulls it down, it's to whoever ends up with the briefcase that was in the match after that, and he could just easily hand it over to her and she gets it. Um, we had a match one night at Primo's where I put Jason into the match, and uh, it was the cash pot is what it was. And inside that, that briefcase was a contract that you could use for anything you wanted. It didn't have to be for a title match. If, if we wanted to, we could have taken that, that contract to, say, Kiki Rose, one of the, the female workers we had there. We could have handed it to her and said, this contract requires you to go make us a sandwich. And per terms of the contract, she would have had to have gone and made us a sandwich. Oh, that's cold. Oh, that's cold. So I put Jason into this match, and when he came down off that ladder with that briefcase in hand, I took it from him and I celebrated as though I had won. And according to the crowd, I won. Well, they were mad about it, but they couldn't deny the fact that it was now my briefcase. That's hilarious. So, uh, so yeah, some uh, some big question marks surrounding this match, but nonetheless, it's going to be really interesting to uh, see the women make history this Sunday at the first women's Money in the Bank ladder match. Um, all right, let's go to the next one here. Um. Let's talk about the uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championship match between uh, the champs, the Usos, versus the New Day. Hmm. I'm getting a little bored with the Usos. I'm sorry, but I am. Uh, it's, uh, I want the uh, I want New Day to win this. I I, I want uh, I, I, I I I want them to go heel again too, though. The New Day. I want them to win the belts, and the on Tuesday night on SmackDown, I want them to go heel. Hmm. Hmm. See, I'm actually the opposite. Thinking the opposite about the the Usos. I think they've been killing it as heels. They they've been cutting some uh, pretty harsh promos. Yeah, I'm not. Know? I'm not arguing with that. I, I'm not saying that they're not cutting the harsh promos. I'm not saying they're not good as heels. I think they're I, 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 they're they're just boring me, and I really think that uh, let's get the belts off them so the focus isn't so much on them. Give them some breathing room, and then put them back into the title hunt later. Okay, okay. Uh, 
I think the New Day certainly does have a good chance of winning them. You know, they are popular, and they did hold the uh, the Raw Tag Team Championships for, oh, God. How, how long? 400-some-odd like four, days? Four, four, odd yeah, 400-some-odd days. I mean, they set the record with, with that. Um, they took it away from even Demolition, uh, it was the longest-running tag team champions in the WWE of all time are now New Day. Uh, uh, any tag titles, they are now the longest running. Yeah, and I, you know, and I don't want to. I don't want to see that again for a long time. I don't want to see them just hand the championships over to the New Day and have them go on another 300, 400 day run. I'm not calling for that. I, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that that be what happens here. I'm saying all I'm cause, saying. Cause I, I'm, I'm afraid that's going to happen if the new day gets a hold of them again. And I, I understand I don't think, that they're over, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. And if you turn them heel right now, you know you're going to have them week in and week out. They're going to be, you know, someone's going to be trying to to get one over on them. And at some point, it's going to happen, and someone's going to take the belts off of them again. I don't foresee this lasting uh, another 400-plus days. Okay. I think the Usos are going to retain here. They're, they're going to continue the feud, but I think uh, Brizongo is also going to be involved in it somehow. Because let me tell you, if, looking at social media and looking at people's reactions... People love Brizongo right now. They love the fashion files. They're entertaining. I'm not seeing any any negative reactions at all. Do you like the fashion files when they put those little comedy segments with Brizongo on there? Do you like them? I think they're amusing, but uh, honestly, I still think Fun Fundango needs to be repackaged. Um, I've been saying this for a while. Um, I like what they've got going on with him and... Um, Tyler Breeze, but we can can we get rid of the dancer gimmick part of it and and give him something else for that part? You know what I mean? I, it, Are it, you it, saying he would look better in the dress than Tyler Breeze? I don't think anybody would look better in a dress than Tyler Breeze. Oh, okay, all right. Just just wanted to make that clear. All right. Where were we? Oh, I was uh, picking the bank. Uh, New Day. I was picking New Day. You are picking No Day, and I was picking the Usos. Okay. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Um, let's see. We talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the WWE uh, championship match between the champion, Jinder Mahal, the, uh, what do they call him? The Maharaja. Uh, versus the Maharaja? Yeah, that too. And uh, and Randy Orton. Real quick, for uh, those of you that don't know, <clears throat> there was some really disturbing stuff taking place this week. Um, if you went to Cowboy Bob Orton's Wikipedia page, that's Bob Orton Jr., um, it kept changing from age 66 to died on June 14th. When, oh, was yes. It yes. Um so the reason I bring this up now is uh, we all figured it was a death hoax, but we were trying to get confirmation. We didn't want to go out there and talk about it and say, hey, there was a, a hoax played on Bob Orton. Or we didn't want to go out there and say, sadly, we come to you to report that Bob Orton has passed away unless we had proof. Because what happens if we go on record and say one thing and it turns out it's the other? So after a while, Jay bone was pointing out that it kept changing. Uh, it was going back and forth because every time I looked at it, it still said he died on that day. Um, it was the 14th because originally it had gone up as the 15th and then somebody corrected it. Um, I went to a good friend of ours. Uh, I went to Matt Barr to uh, see if he had any knowledge of the situation. And when he finally got back to me, um, I told him of Jay bones theory that... Uh, somebody was just trolling the Ortons and Matt Barr said it's probably the Singh brothers. <laughs> Which is funny but horrible at the same time. <laughs> um, I, I don't know much about him other than he is actually still active in the world of wrestling, whether it be 
uh, possibly training people or actually having matches. Um, I've got a couple friends on uh, Facebook who have booked him in matches in their own uh, wrestling, independent wrestling feds that they're associated with. So I know he's still currently wrestling. Um, it says here, so I'm just quick looking at the wiki page. Um, it, it, it was corrected. You know, it says that he is still living, age 66. But it says something else now that I did not notice earlier. Um, it says he was born in uh, Ellesmere Port, United Kingdom, and he is currently living in Ellesmere Port in the United Kingdom. That's not what it said the other night. Um, hold on, let me, let me pull up the page, because um, I remember the other night, I, I remember what I saw where, but I need to pull it up to make sure whether it's in the same spot. I don't remember seeing that the other night, though. Yeah, because it says, it says he was born there and that he is living there. No, the other night it said uh, Florissant, Missouri. That's what I thought. Because I know Orton's from Missouri, and I'm thinking, well, wouldn't the rest of his family live at least close to there? That's what I would assume. Um, so, so yeah, so someone else now is still messing with his page, apparently. Yeah, because I would be pretty surprised to find out that he's living in England somewhere. But, hey, you never know. Um, but nonetheless, yes, you know, the, 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 the rumors the funny thing is, they, away is not true. They, they've created a link on this, um, for, uh, to go to, uh, and they've turned the Ellesmere report into a link to a page that doesn't exist on Wikipedia. Yeah. And then the early life actually in the article it says Orton was born in Kansas City, Kansas. So, yeah, some someone still is and, unfortunately messing with his page. <laughs> poor, yeah. poor, poor, uh, poor cowboy Bob Orton. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, he's <laughs> he is alive and kicking. Randy confirmed it. <laughs> so. On to this championship match between the the modern day Maharaja and uh, the former champ Orton. The rematch. Um, you know, a lot of people assumed for a while that Jinder Mahal was not going to hold this championship very long. Now there are rumors that he could hold it for a very significant amount of time, like even till maybe next WrestleMania. Then there's also people saying that uh, as soon as John Cena comes back, he's going to get it from him rather quickly, probably SummerSlam or something like that. So, who knows, you know? But nonetheless, I don't think... Uh, I wouldn't think Jinder is going to drop it here. That's my pick. I think Jinder is going to keep it. What do you think, dude? Uh, I, I'm thinking Randy Orton. You're picking Randy to get it back, eh? Yeah, I think they're going to put it back on him now. I think uh, I think this feud may be far from over, but I think it's coming back to Randy to extend the feud. Do you think it would go back to Randy to have him become a 15-time champion just to drop it to whoever wins the ladder match that same night? Hmm. Not necessarily. I don't mean. Uh, I don't mean like last year where Dean Ambrose, which I watched it again today. I, I love. I love the whole sequence of it. It just gave me goosebumps because Dean Ambrose is one of my favorites. Even though now currently today he's wearing a flipping bear suit on Raw. Um, <laughs> it, it, the, how everything went down between Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins last year, and then. Dean Ambrose cashing it in. It, it was quite a, it was quite a moment in my opinion last year. Not saying the same thing is going to happen on Sunday, 
but it would be interesting if Randy did get it back to only lose it shortly thereafter to whoever's going to win the ladder match. Um, Here's my thing. Honestly, looking over who's in this match, uh, I would I would have originally gone with Shinsuke as uh, the person to win this match. Um, not necessarily because I want him to be, which is not saying that I do or I don't. I'm the 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 point here being that as the new guy uh, who's looking to get an incredible push. I would have thought this would have gone to him. However, they had him climb the ladder and pull it down on SmackDown at the end of everything that went on this week. Yeah. So, honestly, I don't think he's going to be the one to win it. I think it's going to be um, one of our other guys. Um, I, just, I just can't see Sammy or Baron winning it, even though it'd probably be cool for one of them to do it. Um, so that kind of narrows it down to Dolph, AJ, or Owens. Um, I, honestly, I, I just can't see them giving it to Dolph, as cool as that would be for me. So I think KO or AJ are your top two probabilities to walk away as the money in the bank holder. Um, I'm going to go with AJ on this one. Uh, as much as as much of a fan of Kevin Owens as I am, and as good of a shot as I think he has, I think AJ's doing it this time. Yeah, I w- yeah. I'm not going to give I'm it to not- Nakamura. He's never been in a la- this is his first ladder match, from what I've heard. Um, in fact, this is a first for a few of them. This is a first for Baron Corbin as well, I think. Um, um. Ziggler's always, uh, obviously, uh, excuse me, Ziggler's obviously been in one before. He's won one before and cashed it in on uh, Alberto El Patron or Alberto Del Rio. Um, when it comes to ladders, I, w- I would definitely give the odds to guys like Owens and Zane because they have been in ladder war matches before, which have been absolutely devastating um <laughs> the, basically the last one that <laughs> uh owens and sammy had together before um sammy left ring of honor as el generico um it was absolutely it was almost hard to watch it was pretty brutal um aj styles has always been quite the high flyer he's been you know it been in a lot of different crazy X Division matches in TNA. Has done some phenomenal things in New Japan, and this last year has been nothing short of phenomenal for him in the WWE. But it's been a while since we've seen him in this in this type of match. It's you know this is kind of this is a tough one. You know I don't think there's a a, a given like oh it's this guy's shot, or it's this guy's turn. I, I don't see that in this match, and I haven't heard anybody say that about any of these guys. Have you? No, I, I mean, I've not seen anything to imply one way or the other. I haven't heard anybody say anything like that. Um, I just have what my gut tells me to go on, and my gut tells me to go with AJ on this one. Yeah, this is a tough one. You know, you almost got to try to think, like, what's going to happen with the championship leading up to that. Um, You know, we've seen guys like Sheamus win it before, which was a complete shock, in my opinion, when he won it, what, a couple years ago? Um, Or was that last year? No, that was at least two or three years ago when Sheamus won it. Uh, um, that was crazy. Oh uh, man, tough one, tough one. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, this really I, is. I, I'm gonna just uh, throw it out there and say, uh, God, it's like you know what? I'm, you, I'm just gonna say I, Kevin Owens. I want to say Sami Zayn because I want to see big things for him, but 
the way they've been booking them lately, I don't see it. But hey, you never know. It's this could be a complete shocker. And you, you know, know I'm, I'm the, kind of, these matches I'm usually kind of, are though. I'm kind of digging the fact that we got it got a couple of these matches down to two options <clears throat> as being the most likely to do it, and we each picked the opposite one on that. Yeah. On both of them, uh, on yeah. all of them that we narrowed down to two. Yeah, I don't think we picked the same one on hardly any of these. No, we normally don't, but we always back up our reasons. Oh yeah, yeah. <sighs> it's and that's why we do this. We like you know, we like you know. It's fun doing this. It's a lot more fun doing this than sometimes discussing how bad the show was that's afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but my personal opinion on that is um, we're podcasters. We talk about wrestling shows. Yeah. It's kind of what we do. You know, yeah. I mean, we got to do the good and we got to do the bad. We can't we can't just pick and choose. That's not fair. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not fair to our listeners. Do you, do you think that the newscasters that are out there all want to report on some of these bad things that happen? I mean... They don't get to pick and choose their news, and we we really shouldn't either. Yeah, that's true. But we don't get paid like they do. Oh, uh, this is true. Uh, <laughs> um, but saying, you know, we sh- we shouldn't pick and choose. We should be sitting here, and we should be, be reporting it all. Yeah. Um, within yeah, the reason, because of time constraints, of course. But yeah. and I didn't talk about the last pay per view at all because. Uh, you know, on, on paper, it didn't seem like it was going to be that good, but it actually ended up being the, the matches actually ended up being pretty, you know, pretty decent. Not saying it was oh, yeah. like you know show of the year, but it was all right. You know. Yeah, I mean, it was better than Mania. <laughs> so that uh, that pretty much wraps up this prediction show. I think we covered everything. Yep. Um, there is one more thing I would like to say. Oh, go ahead. It has nothing to do with the predictions here, but now, I told you guys maybe there's a reason since I have mentioned Rob Ryzen twice in this show. Here's my reason for this. I recently got the software that uh, my teammates use to do these podcasts. Um, as soon as I get it figured out and know what I'm doing with it, um, I am planning on doing uh, talking to Rob Ryzen and possibly doing an interview show with uh, him and I one-on-one, sit down, and, you know, ask him the questions that I think he should be asked, and uh, not pandering questions either. I mean, like, questions I think he should be asked. The hard-hitting questions. Who said hard-hitting questions? I said the questions I think he should be asked. I didn't say they were going to be hard-hitting. Well, just knowing you, and you're kind of heelish, I think it would be hard-hitting. Now, let's say I don't figure this out. I may talk to the Ramblin' guys and see if we can just do a Ramblin' show and have him on. Or if Desi doesn't want to, maybe I'll talk to J-Bone. One way or another, though, I'm either going to get the software figured out and do an interview, or I'm going to talk to these guys about it. But I think that uh, it's an interview you all deserve. Um uh, we're talking about a man who's now faced off with Drew McIntyre twice, once on NXT, once on Impact. Um, he took on Baron Corbin in a seven-second match on NXT. Um, oh, yeah. Great, great things are in Ryzen's future, and I think you all deserve an interview. Um, Even if he can't discuss so, everything that's going on. True. Who say anything about talking about the present? Maybe I'm going to ask him about the past. Oh, yeah. And that's important, too, to see where they came from and how they got into, you know, the situation that they're in now. And yeah, that's important. Yeah. And that's important for any, now, any, any all inter- of this interview. Is, all of this is supposition until I speak to him and see if he's even interested in doing an interview with me. But I'm going to do my best because I think you all deserve that. Um, this guy is spectacular. He is, uh, in my opinion, he is the future of the big leagues. Well, there you go. Well, good luck on that. Hopefully, you can bring that to us in the somewhere in the near future. Would love to. That's what I'm hoping to do. And would also love to be a part of it. So even if it is a rambling, you know, rambling about wrestling, 
uh, a special feature or whatever you want to call it. So, so all right, good things in the future coming. I'm gonna try to get a few people on here in the near future myself. Um, we'll we'll see how that works. Had, haven't had that in a while. Uh, <laughs> So that's going to do it for this Money in the Bank 2017 prediction show. Thank you very much for joining me, Max Magus. Fellow Rambler, uh, you know, if you haven't gone to check out the Rambling About Wrestling podcast, please do so. Uh, just look them up on uh, any of the social media formats. Uh, we yeah. have a YouTube channel. We're on Facebook. We're on the Twitter box. Uh, that's know. right. We'll tweet all of your Facebook. Yeah. We're everywhere. <laughs> so, so yeah, like I said, that's going to wrap this up. And uh, we'll see what happens Sunday in this history-making Money in the Bank pay-per-view. For this incredibly heelish guy over here, I am Jay Bone. Good night, folks. Night.